Okay, so hello everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to our the fourth in our ASEAN teacher webinar series. It's great to have everybody here this afternoon. Um, my name is David Guarini Gil Martin. I'm from the British Council here in Hanoi, Vietnam. And it's great to see so many people. I can see the number of participants ticking up uh, every few seconds. Um, so welcome to this, uh, the third in our series. Today, we're looking at how to teach listening. Um, and before we start and before I introduce our panel, yeah, please do, if, if you say in the, in the chat, great to see so many people already saying hello um, in the chat. So please say, uh, say hello and say where you're from across our region um, as, you, as you're joining. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, feel free during the webinar to keep your cameras on, but please try and keep your microphones on mute during the main session um, so we can hear the speakers, the main speakers. But please do share your questions and any comments in the chat. So it's great to see everyone saying hello now in the, in the chat box. And please, as we go through the webinar, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A, and then we'll, we should have about 10 minutes towards the end um, to be able to address some of your questions. My colleagues, Maria and Book, will help me with that. Um, <clears throat> I can see we're up to 150 participants already, which is great. Um, and also note that this session will be recorded, okay? Um, for uh, So note that, and we'll also be sharing that um, on our channels, our British Council Vietnam uh, YouTube channel and the British Council Indonesia YouTube channel. So if you or your colleagues miss the webinar, you can watch it again later on. Um, so uh, that without too much further ado, I'll start to introduce our panel. Oh, so hopefully you can see them all there now. There now. So as I said, my name's David, I'm here in Vietnam, and I'm gonna go around uh, our countries. So I'm gonna start with Indonesia. Um, Selamat sore, so, sorry, Selamat sore, Diane. Sorry, David, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Can you, can you introduce yourself first, Diane? You're on mute, Diane. I'm oh, sorry. Hi, everyone, greeting from Indonesia. I see many uh, friends from Indonesia. Uh, I currently teach English in secondary high school at SFN for Bandung, West Java. It's good to be here, David. Thank you. Great, thank you. And I can see Nina also from Bandung. So, Salamat Sore, Nina, and everybody else from uh, from Indonesia. Uh, from Indonesia, we go to Thailand. So, Sawadee Kap to K and B. Hello, guys. Everybody. Can you introduce yourselves? Okay, start for me, yeah. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Kay, and I'm an educational supervisor working at Primary Educational Service Area uh, Office 1, Utai Thani, Thailand. And there are 78 schools and about 75 primary English teachers in my area. And um, my responsibility is uh, supervision, you know, like uh, English language teaching and learning yeah? and working on a research with the teachers. And I'm not alone. Um, I'm with B from Thailand, and we're happy to join this webinar and hope to share our practice and learn from you. And let's meet teacher B. Hi, everyone. I'm B, Lusalin Gamakam. I'm a primary English teacher at Wat Don Wai School, Uthai Thani Province in Thailand. I teach student primary one to primary six. Uh, today, I'm so happy to, to be here to share my experience with young learner before and during a COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. Great, thanks B, thanks Kay. And last but not least, we go to Vietnam. So I'll say Xin Chao Mayang. Can you Hello. introduce yourself? Yes, yes, of course. 
Hello everyone, my name is Ding Thi Mang and I'm a lecturer at uh, Foreign Languages Department, Vinh University. I'm also a trainer in courses organized by National Language Project and Vinh University with the aim to improve the quality of teachers at Vietnamese primary, secondary and high school as well. So today it's my great honor to be a part of our webinar and share with you how we can organize uh, an effective listening lesson. So hope you can enjoy today's webinar. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks, Mang. That's great. And also, um, I'm looking in the chat. I see lots of people from Indonesia, from Thailand, and from Vietnam, but also I say Mingalaba to any colleagues, to any teaching colleagues who are joining us from Myanmar as well. I think we might, please say hello in the chat um, if you're here today. Um, Okay, so um, we're going to move on and start our conversation about teaching listening and hear ideas from our, our panel of expert teachers. And also before we get into the questions, at the end of today, we're going to introduce you to a, a new free course from the British Council, which looks at how to teach listening. So we're going to share a little bit more about that at the end and hopefully Kay and a book sorry, K and B, I knew I'd make that mistake. K and B are gonna try and show you how to enroll uh, on the course using the Teaching English website. Uh, my colleague Maria has just put the link uh, in there and you can also see the QR code on the screen as well. So um, we'll show, share that with you towards the end. Um, and we'll, as I said, we'll also have some time for some Q and A as well towards the end. Uh, but back to our discussion. So first of all, as I say, today we're focusing on looking at uh, teaching, listening, and my first question uh, for everybody is, as teachers, what do you think are some of the challenges that you face when teaching listening, either for you as a teacher or for your students as well as learners of English? Um, let's start with uh, Mayang. Can you share your, some of your experiences first, Mayang? Um, okay. Uh, I'm happy to be the first person to share about the challenges that teachers and also learners are facing when teaching and learning listening school. And while most of my students say that listening activities or listening tests always create high levels of anxiety and stress that can interfere with comprehension, um, sometimes they know the words but get the wrong sense. Or sometimes they know the word in written form, but not the oral version. Phonetic variation of a word such as like reduction, assimilation, elision, linking sounds might mislead them. You know, or sometimes they know the words, but they feel so anxious and under pressure to fill in the listening activity as well. Or in other situations, they know the words but they cannot remember immediately when they hear or they cannot understand clearly as speakers in listening tapes or videos are speaking so fast. Well, you know, unlike a reading text that is at the learner's control, a listening text is constantly moving and at for a variable speeds that often cannot be controlled by the listener. So they can be slow sometimes, they can be fast, or they are not allowed to listen to recordings again. So that's reason why I say it's quite challenging for language learners to, to find appropriate listening materials, design suitable listening activities, and encourage students to overcome their fear of listening. Okay. And, um, yeah, and one more thing is like in Vietnam, the time for listening lesson is quite short to fully develop student listening skill. And they do not have the habit of listening to English every day at home outside the classroom context, I mean. So which, uh, sorry, which significantly affect the quality of teaching and listening, this important communicative skill as well. So, you know, the more time they expose to English, the better listening skill they can achieve, right? So here are just some main problems uh, that English teachers and learners are facing in terms of listening skill. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thanks, Maya. I think it's interesting that you mentioned as well about developing listening skills and how we can do that both in the class mm -hmm. and also at home as well. And we can come back to that later on when we look at some uh, possible solutions or strategies. Yeah. Um, let's move to uh, Dian. Um, Dian, you teach uh, secondary students. So yeah. can you share some of the challenges you have okay, um, either uh, as, for, yourself, for yourself as a teacher or for your students as well? As learners. Teenagers, okay. In my experience, teaching English is actually fun and the students are usually eager to try to complete the task and they usually concentrate fully on the audio so they can complete the task. However, there are some challenges that we face when it comes to teach English. Uh, here I have tried to collect some of the problems, common problems that uh, my colleagues also perhaps uh, find it in their teaching life. So the first one is we, we need to, we need to provide, provide extra time to find the, to find or recording suitable listening materials to our learning objectives because our official course book uh, doesn't count series or listening materials. And then the second one is we need to make extra effort in setting the, the audio device, additional audio, audio device because most of public schools in Indonesia don't have listening facilities. Some schools are probably lucky enough to have uh, listening facilities and they have a uh, complete uh, course book with CDs, but for common public school, uh, we need to bring our own speakers. And sometimes we have to try, when we try uh, the, the listening material at home, everything works just fine. <laughs> but then when we come to the classrooms, one or other thing goes wrong and then, uh, the students cannot hear the, the audio. And then the third one, uh, so we both, both the teachers and the students are often intimidated by the, the pronunciation, just like uh, my young said, yeah. we are intimidated by the pace and then the pronunciation, the accent of native speakers. So we, try, we tend to avoid uh, teaching things that we are not too familiar with. And then the last one, perhaps, uh, we don't have enough exposure to a natural listening environment. So um, some parts of Indonesia, uh, they are very popular and they receive many foreign visitors. So they meet a lot of foreigners, but here in Bandung, uh, we don't normally see foreigners. So perhaps some of, us, uh, some of my students think uh, it, it is rather insignificant, insignificant to their lives because they don't meet uh, foreigners very often. Mm. So these are the common problems that we face in Indonesia. And uh, our students are usually very insecure. Teenagers uh, tend to be insecure and they don't have enough confidence to speak or to listen to uh, native speakers. So I think these are the common challenges that we find in the right. classroom. I think it's really good as well, um, Dian, that you mentioned about exposure to to non-native speakers or yeah. to non for example in your context to non-indonesian speakers because the people that they may meet may be maybe not native speakers but they might be visitors from another country in ASEAN for example mm -hmm. so somebody from Thailand or someone from Vietnam or someone from Singapore that's speaking English so again there's different okay. ways to think about that as well okay. um, that's another uh, thing we can think about when we think about the point as you and Mayang have both mentioned about the challenges of different accents or the different pace yeah. of language um, let's move now to um, thanks dear and let's move now from secondary to primary so be and Kay, can you share some of the challenges you have, particularly when teaching primary learners? Very, very different. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, since we talked about, you know, non-native um, speakers from, from Dian um, in Indonesia, right? So I think the challenge, I think we have like this, we are on the same page right now. And, and the challenge is that English is a heterogeneous language with multiple norms and diverse grammar. So to be really proficient in English today, our students have to be multi-dialectual. Much of the communication in, in English happens among multilingual speakers and, you know, like non-native, non-native interactions. 
So take our yeah. webinar for an example, right? We have ASEAN teachers, you know, like listening to the talk right now. And so the demand of teaching, listening, comprehension for understanding native English speakers is, you know, like only native speakers would be misconception, right? So teaching by using only commercial listening texts of native light accents or a standard English can be a shortcoming. Like if we're thinking about preparing students for the future uh, real life situations, you know. So I think um, I think that to prepare our students for the polarization of the use user and form of the English language is is our priority right now. And um, if we have a look at the CEFR 2018 on listening, there are, there are some kind of changes right now. And the C1 level is relevant to you know, um, the understanding of a wide range, you know, using the recorded uh, and broadcast audio material that include non-standard usage between the speakers. So when we're talking about um, the audio materials that, you know, not only standard English, um, B, teacher B and I are, you know, like in the primary level, um, B students, her students are not C1 proficient users. <laughs> B has been working on her online class listening material that includes non-native light accents, her own accent local likes accents yeah Good. model yeah. language so i'm going to hate uh, to be and yeah how she uh, how she see her challenges okay b thank you pj for me i think teaching young learner with limit breakout of english language is a uh, and vocabulary bank is one of the challenge in teaching primary level the student not have supportive environment and suitable learning material for, for learning English at home. For example, when, when the student at school, I can monitor and I can check understand the student. But during the pandemic, it's difficult for me to share listening text. So I have to design the video and when I use the commercial listening material online, I find that the students don't understand the meaning. If they can't transfer the meaning of the input, they can produce the output. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good point. I'm really glad you made that um, connection between the input and the output B. That's, I think that's very, very important. Brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing that, uh, both of you. Um, so now we've outlined some of the challenges, both for our learners and also for the teach for ourselves as teachers. Let's turn to my next question, which is, so what do we do? How do we try to help um, our students to develop their listening skills? Mayang mentioned right at the beginning about developing listening skills and talking about what we can do in the class as well as what we can do at home. Um, so let's let's go back to Thailand and, and B. Can you share some of your ideas when you're working with your primary young learners? What do you do to try to help them develop their listening skills? Yeah, I let me share the video. Okay, sure. ทักทายการทักทายที่เราเจอในชีวิตประจําวันก็ได้เรียนบางส่วนในห้องเรียนไปแล้วใช่มั้ยคะก็จะมีการทักทายอยู่หลากหลายรูปแบบค่ะอย
This for grade one, primary that's one. Primary one, okay. So what, how would you use that? Obviously that's for an online class during COVID. So how would you use that video with your students? Uh, I, uh, <laughs> just a moment. Uh, in our school, primary one is the first year to study. So I use the short word or the short sentence with my student. Uh, that you see from the video. Uh, that video made use of Thai language effectively because the most important that I want the student to understand is the target language and the meaning. And later you, they can listen my recording at home with their parents and can use the recording to complete the activity sheet. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I think later on in the we haven't got time to show it today, but later on you have you have some um, activity sheets, don't you, that the students use, and they kind of have a little exchange, little dialogue with maybe their friends or maybe their parents at home. Yeah, so some really some really nice ideas there, and um, very simple. Thanks, uh, B. Um, let's move from primary to secondary. Um, Dean, do you yeah. want to share some of some of your ideas? How you tried to um, to develop your students' listening skills? Mm, yes, definitely. I would like to uh, for to overcome the challenges in teaching listening. Maybe I just need to force myself to try uh, something new. And then I in this webinar particularly, I would like to share one uh, very interesting lesson that I think gave significant impact to my students. A friend of mine is a teacher in Malaysia, and he asked me to have a joint lesson with my students. So he, he said that the student had gone through this uh, long period of distance learning during the pandemic, and they become bored. So why don't we add some color to our teaching routine? So I instantly said, yes, it's a great idea. So uh, we should do that. So it would be interesting for the students. So I offered this program to my students and surprisingly, David, uh, they were less enthusiastic. The students were less enthusiastic. Yes. Okay. So when, when, when I offered them who would like to participate in this joint program between Malaysia and uh, Indonesian students, they said, oh, I don't think so. I don't, uh, I'm not confident enough to speak in English. I don't, I'm afraid I uh, couldn't understand what they were saying. So all okay. those kind of reasons. So I need it take it took time for me to encourage my students. It's a precious opportunity. So you should join this program. So in brief, uh, I managed to collect like 20 to 30 students to participate in this uh, in this event. And uh, during the event, the they were divided into six uh, six breakout rooms. Uh, four students from Indonesia shared the same room with four students uh, from Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they were forced to uh, present something they have in uh, their, their daily life, what is different from Indonesia uh, with uh, Malaysian students. So they were forced to speak in English. They were forced to listen to the, their uh, friends from Malaysia. And they, they tried to uh, ask uh, some questions. They uh, answered some questions. So let me share this the documents so we call the program borderless friendship friendship right so they can actually listen to authentic english and uh at the end of the program i asked some feedback from the students and it was nice to see how they changed their perspective from the, the beginning they were reluctant they were uh, not confident but then in the end they gave very uh very precious uh, feedback they said this activity made me realize that I'm not the only one struggling during this hard time. Now I feel less lonely. And then the other student said, to be honest, at first I was very nervous when I tried to talk to a Malaysian student, but now I'm not nervous anymore. Thank you okay. for the dining activity. And then the other said, I don't feel confident with my English. It's all, always the bigger, the biggest problem in a uh, student's part. I don't feel confident with my English. But now I enjoy talking and listening in English. I learned a lot from this program. Thank you so much. And uh, they can make a lot of new friends. They talk to Malaysian students in Insta. So David, uh, it gave me new experience as a teacher. It's uh, 
It's very nice, and I would like to share it with uh, my friends here. Maybe we should try this uh, in regular basis. So it was nice to see. Uh, I, I get to know Mayan and then B from uh, Thailand. Maybe we can do this sometime. Maybe we can. Uh, we have joint program uh, between Indonesian students and Thailand students, Thai students, and with a uh, Vietnam student. It would be very interesting. Thanks, yeah. Diana. Thanks for sharing that. I lo I love that idea as well, especially because, um, as my both Mayang and Kay were saying before. Mm -hmm. Again, in our region, when we're speaking to each other from different countries between Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, the, the common language is English, yes. but everybody speaking is a, non, is a non native speaker of mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. So, having giving your students those opportunities to listen to each other and speak to one another is a great way, yeah. uh, as you say, That's to okay. yeah. they started off quite reluctant and quite resistant to the idea, but once they were exposed to it and they saw, as you said, yeah. that their, their fellow students in another country had similar challenges. The first step issues. is always the hardest step. Yes, yeah, very yeah. good point. Yeah. Yeah, thank, that's a really that's a really nice idea. Thanks for sharing that, Dean. Um mm -hmm. thanks. And let's go to, to Mayang. Can you share some of your again the same question? Obviously, you're working mainly with um with students, with kind of university students and with, with adults with with through your teacher training. So different from B, who's working with primary children, or with um, with DN, who's working with with teenagers and secondary age students. But again, what are some of the ways in which you help your students to develop their listening skills or to practice their listening skills? Okay, before sharing, I really appreciate Diane's ideas, and maybe we can do it later at the webinar. Okay. Yeah. Um, so back to David D's question to have students develop their listening skills and strategy, I want to emphasize the importance of intensive and extensive listening. Well, there are different types of listening practice that focus on different skills. To get the maximum benefit, language students need to do both types of listening. In case that you don't actually know what is intensive listening and extensive listening, um, I'm gonna go deeper like, into the definition and how we can have this. Um, for listening, intensive listening, it focuses primarily on brief listening exercises. And um, when you do intensive listening practice, you are paying more attention to pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, rather than overall meaning. So by focusing on these aspects, intensive listening practice will help our student to build a groundwork for language acquisition. And uh, since our students are understanding basic component parts of the language, they can build on these skills over time. So, um, because it serves to have listeners understand key foundation aspect of language. Intensive listening is particularly important for beginning and intermediate students. So um, you can do intensive listening practice in the class. You can uh, design guided activities that for our students to focus on basic parts of the language. Um, and for example, like they can ask them to listen to recording and do the guided exercises. So um, it will have our students to focus more on the structure and the vocabulary. They need to listen to the details and yeah, they need to be really focused to the listening activity. And, but intensive listening is not enough. Listening inside the classroom with the exercises is not enough. We need extensive listening. So extensive listening focuses on longer activities. And um, rather than focusing on individual parts, it focuses on overall understanding. And our students don't have to translate every word, focus on grammar rules instead of, instead of that they simply have to try to understand the audio or the video as a whole. So um, it will help our students to understand spoken language in the real world context. Mm -hmm. And this one is really important for intermediate 
and advanced students who are looking to transition from academic understanding of the language toward full fluency or to the real life activity. So um, I have some suggestion for extensive listening practice. So maybe at first you can listen, you can ask your student to listen to the audio books. So beginners might try children's books which will you a more limited vocabulary, but for intermediate students, they can try short story, which are less overwhelming than full length books or for advanced students. They can enjoy all types of audio books that um, they like, or maybe they can watch. Okay. Yes. No, I'm just going to add before yes. you go on, my I'm just going to add oh, one okay. idea as well. My colleague from British Council Indonesia, Colin, is also, I think he's still on the on the, 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 the webinar. So he's got another thing he suggests, as well as audiobooks, is listening to podcasts as well. Yeah. So so again, if you've got any recommendations, I mean, hopefully Colin can write in the chat. He's got one or two suggestions, and that's very similar to that idea about some some ex longer extensive listening that students can to do, can listen to. Sorry, Ryan, continue. Okay, okay, yeah, great idea. I forgot to mention the podcast, and um, or maybe you can ask students to watch authentic media, watch movies, TV, other entertainment is useful for extensive listening. Maybe. You in Vietnam, you in Thailand, or you in Indonesia, but you can get access to the internet and you can live the life of American um, English people in Vietnam, like mm. right. So um, yeah, if you have any trouble finding authentic media in your Turkish language, I mean in English, so YouTube is uh, a great uh, website for you, so you can buy everything there. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, my And it's really good that you talked about that, the difference between like intensive listening, which might be sort of short listenings in the class versus ex more extensive listening. And I think that's not just for intermediate and advanced level students, but even for even for children as well. So, yeah. for example, for, for B, I mean, she might show a, a, a short video or a song or a cartoon, yeah, yeah. Um, which for a, for a child, for a kind of a young learner, would be an example of uh, extensive listening. There's, I can see lots of comments coming in in the chat and also a few questions coming in in the Q&A as well. So um, we'll come back to some of those later. But B, before we move on to our final question, I saw one of the questions in the, in the chat, so I can't remember who it was now, was asking you about any useful activities to help you with your primary students. So B and K, if you've got any ideas in answer to that question. Yeah, B. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's a I think it's a cabbage peeling and slap the board thing from the bootcamp project, right? That B mm -hmm. yeah, B worked with her students. B you want to share with our yeah, it's Tan Tanwara. I think it's Tanwara Kaur. I can't see the full name. Can you recommend some listening activities that are effective for primary school students? Uh, B, can you? Uh, yeah. Before the pandemic, uh, I I designed the activity based on the student student need. Like they like to play games, so I shoot the favorite habit like this one, mm. uh -huh. feel like playing football game, but students can ask and answer the question by peeling paper, like new peel cabinet layer. Uh -huh. And someone asked the question and someone answered the question. Like, excuse me, David, can yes, I peel the paper? Please. Yes. <laughs> and where are you from, David? I'm from Manchester in England. Yeah. <laughs> Be like this. Okay. Okay. So, like, so more interactive, communicative. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Asking yeah. and asking and answering. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. That's yeah. that's nice. And, and, did, it, the, oh, and did the children enjoy that, Kay? Yeah. Well, when when we when we have a look at the um, you know, like how the how the teacher like B and students working together, it's really you know like really cute and you know warm and fun but um b also used that um slap the board uh but 
she adapted some parts of the game. So do you want okay. to explain a little bit more? Is that okay? Let's move on because we, we, I'm just keeping my eye on the time because I want to make sure okay. we can finish on the hour. Because we only, only have we only have an hour. Yeah, maybe um, later. Yeah, um, let's move to the, my my last question before we go to the I say to the Q and A. And thanks everyone for putting your comments and questions in. Um, is for our teachers. I want you to share, if you can, your three top tips for teaching listening. Uh, and let's start with um, Dean. So, if you would make giving some recommendations to your fellow secondary teachers, teachers of, of teenagers, what would be your three top tips for teaching listening? Three top tips uh, for the, uh, both the teachers and the students, right, David? Yeah. So the first one, perhaps I would like to encourage my colleagues to have to be uh, participate in a teacher community. So you okay. can share. It's, it's uh, strongly motivated if, we, if you are included in a teacher development group because mm -hmm. if uh, we don't have uh, such kind of community we tend to do things uh, similar similar things over and over again but when mm -hmm. we have a group of uh, teachers uh, that can share their best practice so we'll, you will be inspired every once in a while and then you uh, you are eager to try uh, something that works for the other teachers I would like to try it, uh, in my classroom so uh, I encourage all the teachers to be to participate in a teacher development uh, group, and then perhaps uh, we need to force ourselves as a teacher to step out of our comfort zone, because when we are not familiar with uh, listening, we are afraid with the accent, the pronunciation. Uh, so we don't try new things. So we need to step. Out, uh, it's a wonderful word out there. So mm -hmm. um, brace yourself and have a courage to step out. And then, so a, so a bit, a bit like when you in, you encouraged or pushed your, your students <laughs> right. to join the, the borderless friendship uh, group. It takes yeah? a lot of time, but then it's worth it because, yeah. unfortunately, our primary students normally uh, here for the past few years they don't receive English as the main subject in the oh, primary okay. school. So when they go to secondary, secondary high school, it's the first experience for them yeah, to, to okay. learn English. So, so, it's even, need, so it's even more challenging in Indonesia. That's then. right. So we need to give them a interesting learning experience. Yeah. So not to discourage them from mm. learning English. And then yeah. for the student, for my student, beloved students uh, all over Indonesia, be confident. Your voice is to be heard. Okay, so uh, most of my students always said, I'm not confident, I'm afraid to speak in English, I'm afraid I will be bullied because my English is not that good. It's like, uh, shut up, your English is not good. So they were, they were always afraid to uh, receive such a reaction. So okay. I just want to encourage my students, be confident. Yeah. are wonderful. A... Try, yeah. try to speak in, it's not our language. So it's a common to me. It's okay to make mistakes. Do okay. not be afraid to make mistakes. I think that's really. I think that's really good advice at the end there, Dean. It's. It's. We often say as teachers, like, you know, be confident, be confident, try and be confident. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's quite difficult. I think for teach for us as teachers, what we need to do is make sure mm -hmm. that we encourage our students yeah. to don't be afraid of making that's mistakes right. no one is going to tell you off or bully you or embarrass you, embarrass you if you make a mistake uh, in fact the opposite you should be you should be rewarded for trying right. um, exactly but to grow to grow such confidence takes time so yeah brilliant. it doesn't work within one or two or three years but maybe when they go to uh, the next level of the education, they will be mm. confident. Yeah, and it's, again, I'm as I'm listening mm. to you, Dean, as well. I'm looking at the comments in the in the chat, and there's some really positive comments. People are taking on board all your advice from from you, as well as Kay, B, and Mayang. So it's really nice to see. Let's thanks, Dean. Uh, let's go to uh, Kay and B. What about same question? What would be your top tips for teaching listening to primary children to young learners? Yeah, well, I would say 
thinking about reconceptualization of the diverse varieties of English in our listening texts. Like when designing a listening activity, we may consider asking ourselves like the three questions, like first, is it possible to expose students to the varieties of English that they are likely to encounter in their daily life? I mean, yeah. with primary learners, we should prepare them, right? Because inter, uh, intercultural communicative competence should be the key focus. Mm -hmm. And the second question we should go like, can we make ways for promoting the diversity of English through the localized context? I see some comments from the chat, like, is it okay if I use like native language in yes, this? I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that in the chat. Yeah, but, yeah, well, if we think about localized context, you know, like embrace our own um, mother tongue, but use it effectively, like be just in, uh, introduced you guys, like you can, you can make ways, you know, for the students to, to learn how to shuttle appropriate uh, use of both their mother tongue, their native tongue, to English in a communicative context, yeah? yeah? And the third question, the last one would be, are we the role model of multilingual English teachers? Yeah, because if we're still using only standard English, then no changes, right? Yeah, no, I think that's a really good, that's a really good point about, on you know, your first point as well, Kay, about exposing uh, students at, at any age, primary, secondary, or adults to that, the varieties of English. And that includes, you know, the varieties of English across our region, you know, here across ASEAN and across Asia more generally. So rather than relying on um, a native speaker or a standard, what's traditionally seen as standard English and, get, and getting away from that. And that's really important. Um, yeah, and lots of opportunities for them to speak and listen. Again, I saw some of the comments, some of the questions, or some of the comments in the chat, and one of the questions I think we'll address in just a few minutes as well is asking that mm -hmm. about the relationship between speaking and listening. So we can come on to that in just a moment. And before we go to the Q and A, uh, Mayang, what about you? What would what would be your three top tips? Thanks, Kay. What would be your three top tips for teaching listening? Mm, okay, uh, so the first one should be like teachers try to pair intensive and extensive listening okay. and teach this important community skill. So, um, and the second one is uh, you can use music in your class and you can use it for either intensive and extensive listening, which will properly, yeah, it will be properly music to your ears. Uh, if you want to use English for intensive listening, so you uh, can ask students to pay carefully attention to the lyrics and how they work together, note the structure of each phrase, or you can easily switch to using music for extensive listening, simply mm -hmm. direct uh, your student attention to understanding the overall meaning of the song. So yep. music is how to play, relaxing it happens to study and, um, and, and also uh, relax at the same time. And one last advice is try to yield as, as many authentic materials and situation as possible in classroom mm -hmm. and also outside classroom. Yeah. So we'll have to prepare our students for the types of listening that we'll need to do when using the language outside the classroom. So, yeah, and, that's and, it. And, yeah, thanks, Matt. And that goes back to exactly what Kay was just saying as well about listening to varieties of English and what, yeah. Dean, what Dean was saying before about, for example, in Bandung, there may not be too many kind of foreigners there, but you want to expose them to different types of English. And it's great to see some of the comments as well in the chat about world Englishes, global yeah. Englishes. Yeah. So it's great, great to see us thinking about, about that and getting away from native speaker or standard <laughs> English which we don't which we won't hear so much of in uh, in this part of the world okay brilliant thanks everybody now it's time to go to the Q&A um, and I can see a number of questions I don't know if uh, book my colleagues book and Maria are you are you going to help me to, to choose some questions or do you want me to choose some from the from the Q&A hi um, can you hear me yeah, we can hear you fine, um, Book, yeah. It's Book, so I'm from Thailand. I think Hi, most book. of the questions have already been 
in answer or cover already, but I found one question just coming in from anonymous attendee. Um, and that person is asking, do you have any strategy to share for teaching listening using video for high school students? Um, I find that teaching listening using video more interesting for them, yet sometimes I found it confused to decide which strategy fit the classroom. Thank you. Mm, thanks. Um, would anybody like to try and answer that question? Maybe Dian, have you tried using a video with your high school students? You're on mute, Dian. I tried using the video, but not for teaching listening. I try to make them uh, conclude what is the video about and then share how is it uh, related to your life. So I think uh, there is no one or right or wrong strategy for using video. It, you, you need to set the, the clear objective for the student. What do you want the, uh, your students to be able to do at the end of the lesson? Once yeah. you are clear with the objectives, then you need to browse for the suitable video that can help the student to reach the objective. And then uh, uh, perhaps uh, setting up the task for the student or for your student. Now, I think some of the attendees also give uh, links to the materials that we might use and perhaps a British Council can uh, provide the list for the participants to use at, uh, in the end in their classroom. Yeah, af afterwards, I'll share with you uh, a link um, or what maybe um, my colleague's column book or, or uh, Maria can share as well the link to some of the, le the Learn English uh, websites that we have, where yeah. we have lots of resources, including videos for, for primary, Learn English kids, for teenagers, Learn English teens, or for adults, the, le the Learn English site as well. And there's lots of, lots of useful resources there, including, including some videos. Um, what about uh, Mayan K, P, have any of you used um, video to, to help your students develop their listening skills? And, and how have you found that? Mm, um, okay, in my case, I often use the videos to teach my student listening skill because I think it's quite uh, interesting to let them to listen from the video instead of just uh, listen to the audio because they can learn from the, the way our native speaker use the body language and the facial expression. So it's really important for speaking skill as well. So um. When I teach uh, our student using that type of uh, the video, uh, I normally I will set a purpose or like I will explain, like give them the reason why they need to listen to the video and uh, decide whether any linguistic or background knowledge is needed so they can be prepared uh, before listening to the video, they can be prepared for the general idea and the language as well. And um, uh, yeah, and we can have some predictions at first. And, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's a good point. It's, this, it's the same, any kind of listening, particularly if we're doing it in class, yeah. where you might want to do the kind of the, the pre-stages yeah, before you get to the while listening or while watching a video and then think about some post stages as well. Um, we can use the same kind of pre-while and post structure um, for, for using video in the class to develop listening skills as well as using audio in the class. Um, K, P, anything, B, sorry, anything you'd add from your experience to that question? Well, I would recommend um, using TikTok video. Um, you know, like we're talking about non-native um, English. Yeah, right. Great yes. idea. There are a lot of there are a lot of um, video like makers who try to promote like um, Singlish, Minglish, you know, or Tinklish in a really, I mean, funny way. And and I think it's that I mean you can choose uh, the the students level, yeah, and design the activities based on uh, the TikTok videos. You can just like type uh, some kind of English or Singlish stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's, okay. it will be fun for your class. Okay, and yeah, maybe they can do that in the class or, or at home as well. Yeah. B, were you going to add something? With thinking uh, about thinking about work, working with um, primary learners? 
for me, uh, I I try to find some video from YouTube to be pre-listening for my student before they start the lesson. Mm -hmm. Like student will study about part of body, so I will find the song about body to to give them to hear the word before they start learning. <laughs> yes, you like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, children love, needs to. I love that. It's one of my favorites with primary <laughs> with primary learners. <laughs> Even with adults, you can still do that. It's a great way to the vocabulary, the actions, the TPR, and the listening all combined. That's that's always a fun one. Okay. Um <clears throat> All right, I think we're going to have to move. There's lots of questions starting to come in now, but unfortunately, I'm just keeping my eye on the time. We only have 10 minutes left. We could spend all, all afternoon and evening <laughs> discussing your questions, but if we've got time, we'll come back to them. Um, so thanks very much. And please keep putting your comments in the in the chat as well. I can see my colleague, Colin, uh, making some points there as well for you to, to consider. Um, now, I'm going to try and share my screen. Ah, Yes. Oh, can you see my screen? Not yet. Mm, hold on. Now, where's the sh ah, share screen? Okay. Voila. Okay. So, yeah, so we've done the Q&A already. Yep. Um, so thanks, everyone, for your questions. So, yes, yeah, so now, just before, in the last 10 minutes, I'm going to show you um, how you can join this free course. If you're interested to learn more about uh, how to teach listening, no matter who you're teaching, as I say, you can find this course on teaching English. You can, if you have, um, you can look at the QR, use your phone, and you can use, get the QR code um, off the screen now. Through the course, you can also join some Facebook, uh, a Facebook group, a community of practice, which Dean mentioned before. There'll be some Facebook live events where we'll discuss different aspects of teaching listening, the same as we've done this afternoon. Um, and at the end, you can also receive a British Council certificate. And to enroll on the course is completely free of charge. The course started last week, last Tuesday, and it lasts for four weeks. So you've still got plenty of time to join. Uh, and there, there are three modules and you can take them at your own pace, at your own time. And it should take about 12 hours of, of study time in the three weeks that are remaining. So what I'd like to do now is hopefully, um, I'll stop sharing my screen and hopefully B and K, are you going to show us how to how to en enroll on the course? Okay, um, let me share the screen for you then. Brilliant. Well, can you see now? No? Yes? Uh, no. Not yet, no. Oh, there's something wrong. B, can you, <laughs> can you share though? Let, let me try. That's okay. We've got we've got some time, so it's okay. Well, this, well, in reality, uh, it's coming up. There you go. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, so um, so again, it's you're looking at the for everybody. You just go onto the Teaching English uh, website. If you just put in Teaching English in Google, it's always the first website that pops up. Yeah. And okay. yeah, someone's put the link. Thank you. Someone's put the link. Uh, Gumma Wang Jati has put the link in the in the chat. Thank you for that. So, how do you and can you show us? Be how would you enroll on the course? Like about this. Yeah. So you've got the three. You can see the three modules there. So yeah. understanding listening skills, active listening, and then listening strategies. Okay. But if you just go up to the where it says enroll on the course. Oh, enroll on this enroll, course. Yeah, that, the blue. And if you click on that. Okay. And it should take you. Hopefully, it will take you. Okay. And uh -huh. Okay. So now... If you're not if you're not already registered, you can um, 
create a new account or are you already a member are you already registered b oh i i don't have you don't have okay so then yeah you click on create new accounts and yes. then you can put in your name uh -huh. and your email address And then just confirm your email address in the next in the next box. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Copy and paste. I like that. <laughs> okay. And then and a, a password. A, a password. Has, oh, good. It's secret. Nobody. I was going to say otherwise. Uh, okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's, it's still secret. Nobody can see. Only you know what your password is. Oh. Okay. Just a moment. Yeah, we have to repeat that. <laughs> okay. The next one. Yeah, and that's the password matches. If you want to register for it, so maybe for you, you can register for the Teaching English Teachers newsletter. Yeah. Okay. Ah, now, they, now it matches. Okay, good. The next then, one. That's up to you. You can you can do that later. You can register later if you want, <laughs> or you can register now. Okay. Okay. And then at the bottom, I think you just need to put in your name. Oh, um, given name. Sorry. That's okay. It's up, it's up to you. You can put any. You can put any. So that's your yeah your given name, your first name okay. there, and then your family name, and then Thailand. Yeah. And then I think. When you, then you should be very close to joining the course. And the next one. Yeah, next one. I think we just go scroll down. Yeah, just click, click, and say that you're not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> very good. I think that's right. Ooh, so, so many, so many pictures for you to look at. Create new account. I think so. And then it's signing, it should sign you up and take you. Yeah. And now it should take you immediately to the course. I think. If you go down. So now if you now if you go to the course. Course. Uh, if, you, if you go back to the oh, go back, this one. No, not this, not this one. No, no. If you go back to the <laughs> to the home page, yeah, and then back on the home page, you should see training. I think. Go to the, if you go to the top. Go to the top. Yeah, you see tra you see training. Training on the right hand side here. Yes. No, no, yes, that one. See, now it says click on there, how to teach listening. Oh, my God. Here, here, here. <laughs> First one. This one. Yes, that one. Yeah, and now, and now, if you go and, no, now if you go back to, yeah, maybe click on there. It should take you there, I think. Or you can click on enroll on the course and you can log in. Wow. I'm not yet, there. not yet, not yet. <laughs> now, if you if you go to the top, you click on enroll on this course again. Okay. <laughs> Good. Ah, now you have to. So you now you have to join the course. So click on the dashboard. Dashboard. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's Are okay. That's, 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 is at that the top? top? No, no, at the top. At the top. Uh-huh. Dashboard. Yeah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> and maybe. So it says, at the moment it says you don't have any courses. So now explore all courses. Okay. There you go. How to teach listening. Okay. Enroll in activity. Yay. Okay. Successfully enrolled. So there you go. So, See you there, B. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now you can you can see on the right hand side 
on uh oh no, that's an old that's an old course for March. But once you click on here, if you go back, okay. all right, yeah. you should be you should be able to see the there you go. So now you can see the three modules, yeah. So you you can start uh, you can in your own in your own time now. You can start to go through the th the different modules step by step. Okay, all right, <clears throat> brilliant. So hopefully that's that little. It took us some time, but don't worry. That's the whole point is to show everybody how how easy or how challenging it is. <laughs> so first you have to enroll. So first you have to register on teaching English, but it's, it's free of charge. And once you've registered, then you can log on very easily onto the course. The first okay? step is always the hardest. Exactly. Again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so thanks very much um, for sharing that with us, uh, B. and I hope you'll enjoy the course. And um, we've just got a few minutes. It's five o'clock, but if you can just bear with me just a couple more minutes, I'm just going to show you what's coming up in December. So for those of you in Indonesia, you may already know, that we have the Saturday Tech Talk series. There was number four, I think, was on Saturday. Number three, sorry. And then in two weeks' time, on Saturday, the 4th of December, will be the fourth one in the series. So again, if you have your phone, you can have a, you can just use the QR code there uh, to access. And my colleague Maria will put in the chat, she'll also put the link um, to the course there if you want to just follow the, the website. This, uh, ASEAN teacher webinar series we have the next one is coming up um, in on four weeks time on Tuesday the 14th of December and the topic will be gender in language education and I won't be moderating Colm won't be moderating but um, our colleague Miss Maria will be moderating that uh, webinar so we're looking forward to that and again you can use the QR code there or we the uh, the um, link will go into the chat in just a moment. Um, and two more things. I can see some people asking about certificates. I'm going to tell you about the certificates in just a minute. So don't worry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also in December, we have our new directions conference, which is looking at language assessment and the future of language assessment. And that is for teachers, researchers, lecturers across uh, East Asia. Um, so you can join there. Again, you've got the, the QR code on the screen. And here in Vietnam, uh, in four weeks time on Saturday, the 18th of December, you can learn, you can join our Partners in Innovation webinar series. We had our first one on um, Saturday. And our next one is in just under four weeks time. And we'll be looking at the Digital English Theatre Project, which is from the Mekong Delta, uh, with one of the partners, uh, Hands Up, who just won the Elton uh, at the Elton Awards in London last weekend. OK, so those are some things that are coming up over the next few weeks. And before we finish, people are asking about the certificates. So if you look on here, if you, on the left-hand side, you've got the QR code to give us your feedback. What did you think about today's webinar? And if you give us your feedback, then we will send you, or you will automatically receive your the link to create your own e-certificate on the right-hand side there for you. Um, so hopefully that's an incentive for you <laughs> to give us some feedback, uh, either using the QR code or um, using the link that should be in the chat for you now. OK, yeah. And Maria's also put the link in. Thank you, Maria, for the, the next, the fourth episode or fourth edition in our series, uh, ASEAN Teacher Webinar Series. OK, it's great to see so many people. I think we're up to 360 people now. Uh, watching on Zoom. I don't know how many are watching on uh, on YouTube, um, but wherever you are, I just want to say thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. And before we finish, a big thank you to our panel of teachers for sharing their experience. So thank you from Indonesia, Diane, thank you very much. Uh, is that right? Okay, I'm trying I'm to remember. I'm okay. I'm Cop and cap to B and K in Thailand. Thank you very much. Cop and cap and Mayang, all the way down in Ving. Come uh, and you. Okay. And goodbye. All right.
<laughs> all right. Thanks, Maya. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all your time this afternoon. And hopefully you enjoyed the webinar and good luck. Good luck enrolling on the listening course. And I hope you'll enjoy the, the listening, the how to teach listening course on teaching English over the next three weeks. Thanks, everybody. And we'll see you or you'll see my colleague Maria in just four weeks time. Bye for now. Bye. Have a great Bye. evening. Bye. See ya. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye, Kai.